there's no snack quite like popcorn for a night at the movies. Straight ahead on this episode of NTV's Grow. We learn how many servings of popcorn fit in just one grain bin. Plus, the USDA makes a controversial suggestion for the beef industry. And a new soybean oil may be a healthy alternative for restaurants and good for farmers. Get ready to grow. It's a payday delay for many farmers. It's been too wet to harvest. Things are starting to pick up now, but we're definitely getting off to a slow start. I've never had an October hailstorm, so that's a lesson in humility. <laughs> Try as they might, farmers still can't control the weather. Recent rains have harvest on hold for many. Probably the latest start we've ever had. The latest government report shows 85% of soybeans still in the field, 90% of corn waiting to be harvested. So beans that should have been in the grain bin were still in the field when that hail hit. Days later, Ryan Weeks still listens to the damage. You could hear a pop, 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 pop. The hail bruised those pods and as it's warming up, those pods are popping and more beans are going on the ground. On the positive side, all the rain in August and September allowed farmers to cut back on irrigation. Oh, yields look pretty good. I, you know, I think everybody's going to have a good year. They're definitely going to need the bushels considering the prices, you know. Not many uh, private businesses could take a 48 to 50 percent reduction in the price of their product and, and that's what we're looking at this year. After several profitable years, many farmers will be in the red. My unpriced bushels are definitely a loss right now. They're below the cost of production. So uh, I had enough forward contracted this year to be okay, and with the type of insurance we had, we're okay. But as far as next year, I'm very, very concerned. They'd feel better if they could get into the field and get their crops to the elevator and collect a paycheck. It's definitely a slower year than what we're accustomed to. As incomes rise in the developing world, there's an appetite for a product we grow better than anyone, popcorn. I call this our uh, top of the world tour. Norm Krug can see the world from here, or at least the popcorn grown here will end up all across the globe. It's a lot of fun when you're in the combine to look in the back of the tank and know consumed uh, maybe in Tokyo or Jakarta, Indonesia or, or in uh, Taiwan. As growers like the McHarg family harvest popcorn, it brings a challenging year to a close. You know, well, we've had a few fields that got hailed bad and they were almost nothing. So fortunate, fortunate that the ones that didn't get hailed too bad are doing well. And Yields look good and every bushel will help a young farmer like Andrew since popcorn pays better than standard field corn. Maybe a little higher risk uh, crop, but also um, you know, get a little bit of a, a bonus for growing it. But now that we're looking at some really tight commodity prices, that extra premium may become the net income. So I'm, I'm expecting we'll have a good amount of growers. Preferred popcorn has more growers and more acres, and they need to, selling to more than 70 countries. That makes a great market. This 55,000 bushel grain bin holds a staggering amount once it's popped. It would take 70 million people to consume one bin, so uh, I hope that you eat a lot of popcorn this week. For farmers like Andrew, harvest means families around the world will enjoy the fruit of their labor. It kind of gives you pride to, to grow something that you know is going straight to the consumer. Called an accident waiting to happen. The most dangerous rural intersection in Nebraska gets an overhaul, making it safer, but also better, they say, for farmers. No more sharp corners, just wide sweeping curves. Now, big grain trucks on their way to the large CPI co-op or a couple of ethanol plants can completely avoid city traffic in Hastings. You got uh, AGP and CPI and chief ethanol and you got that fertilizer equalizer and, and I don't know what the one south is called there, right. but there's a lot of truck traffic on this side of town. The project is just short of $3 million and was completed quickly just a year after it was approved. The head of CPI says it's already been a great benefit for their drivers hauling corn and beans. 
Nebraska farmers and ranchers who need to fix some equipment may see their repair bill go down as the state drops its tax on repairs. Starting October 1st, the state dropped the taxes it had been charging on repair and replacement parts for agricultural machinery and equipment. The change was prompted by legislation introduced by State Senator Annette Dubas and passed earlier this year. Farm Bureau has cited estimates that the state's farmers and ranchers will save between nine and ten million dollars a year. Well, the price of ham, bacon and pork chops don't expect them to come down anytime soon. Those historically high prices will remain at least through year's end. The tight pork supply situation that we have today is here for the rest of 2014. We're not going to alleviate that anytime soon. If you couple that with strong meat demand in general and pork demand in particular, we're probably going to have historically high record pork prices for the rest of 2014 as well. There are 2% fewer hogs this year compared to last year, according to a new USDA report. That means higher prices on your pork, but findings from Kansas State University indicate shoppers aren't having sticker shock. In fact, demand for pork this quarter is the highest it's been in 10 years. So the U.S. public seen a lot more value in those pork products. Maybe they're more convenient, maybe they're less price sensitive, maybe they had improvement in incomes. Probably some of all the above is actually truth led to that positive demand story. Pork producers are in the process of growing their herds, but it takes about eight months to see a change in the prices. So don't expect cheaper bacon until April 2015. The EPA has extended the comment period on a controversial proposal. The EPA announced it will take comments from the public until November 14th. Senator Mike Johans calls it election year politics, saying the Obama administration is worried about losing seats in the U.S. Senate. Johans said he hopes the EPA is flooded with comments about the proposal. The EPA insists the rule is about protecting clean water, and the EPA says it would not harm farmers. But many farm groups say it would give the EPA jurisdiction over ponds and ditches on farm. And your grow forecast is still to come. Plus, a possibility of having two beef checkoffs will explain that proposal and have reaction from Nebraska cattlemen up next.